That's what makes this program different from everything because we touch everything. It is necessary. When the apostles got locked up, the angel, by God's permission, delivered them and said, go in the temple and tell the people all the words of this life. All right, James chapter 1. Begin at verse 7 and verse 8. I want to take my time and uh, soak you a little. You follow me. In the book of James chapter 1. All right, crank me ready up. Me too, while you're at it. Crank me ready up. All right, Mr. Moretti, come on. In the book of James chapter 1 and at verse 7. Yeah. For let not that man think he shall receive anything. Talking about someone that's unstable. Don't let that man think he will receive anything from God. A double-minded man. This is what I want to work on. Instability. A double-minded man. Is unstable. And how much? In all his ways. That's the whole verse? Yes. That's enough. That's right. That's right. It's hard to trust. A double-minded person. They're too sometimey. They're not sound in judgment. Not sound in decision making. When they're unstable, they're easily coerced. Easily manipulated. Easily conned. Easily deceived and can be easily tricked. You can take a so called friend. If they're unstable, won't be for long, they're going to be your enemy. You can take a so called friend that speak well of you, won't be for long, they're going to cuss you out and lie on you. Bible says from the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursing. A double minded man is unstable to how much? In all his ways. In your presence, they will say they're for you. But behind your back, stabbing you. Lie on you. Use you. I love to deal with folks that are stable. Then I know what I'm getting. Amen. Amen. If you're going to buy stock in a company, you want it to be a stable investment. You don't want to buy a car and that thing is unstable the first day you drove it. It, it, it already backfired. You put it in drive, it go reverse. You put it in reverse, it drive. You put it in park, it go sideways. <laughs> Lord our God, hear me good, one of stable people. If you are unstable, you can never afford and if you want stability, you cannot afford to constantly be around unstable thinkers. Not even naturally. You know whether you got a weak mind, an unstable person. Another term is weak minded. When you're weak minded, you take a person that owns a business, go on a company. Now, uh, if there's fifty thousand dollars that got to be carried to the bank, you want them to be stable-minded. My financial secretaries around the world, they got to be stable-minded, where they never tempted. The ministers in the pulpit, that goes for them too. They can't be tempted by a penny. Millions of dollars pass through my hands. Millions. I'm not tempted not to even take the corner part. <laughs> I'm not even tempted to take the corner 
of a dollar. Money don't tempt me. I was raised that way. When you're tempted by money or by anything, you can't be trusted. Because you're going to be unstable. Now, if you're sound, you can be trusted. You can be put inside a room, big as this auditorium, with money from front, from front to back, from ground to ceiling. Somebody can come back three days later and count it all up. Everything is there. That's good, isn't it? Yes, it is. When you're unstable with the Bible, you ain't fit to be a preacher. A minister can't afford to be unstable with Bible, and because if that's the case, he's going to be all over the place trying to please everybody with what he believes. Another form of instability is the spirit of a chameleon. You know what a chameleon is? A lizard that changed colors. When I was in Jamaica, I was coming out of my hotel, ready to get into the car and get the service one beautiful Sunday morning. Coming down the steps, I stopped. There was a chameleon on the wall. One part of the hotel wall, they didn't finish painting. So it was regular concrete. And the other part, other part was pink. And uh, it got on the pink part. And I just stood there and watched, waiting for his change to come. And he changed. Got on the gray part of the wall, sat there a while. He changed. I looked at him and said, mm hmm. You just like preachers. <laughs> Many preachers change for the people. When Jesus sent his apostles out, they wouldn't change for nobody, but they preached change for the world. If I'm going to change, let me be for my better, yeah, for the salvation. But uh, when you stand for God's word, you should not change because people want you to change. And now your teaching become lies, artificial, fake. An unstable man don't even need to be baptizing nobody. Talk to him one day while well, I'm leaving the church. Talk to him the next day. Did you leave? No, I'm giving some more thought. Next day, leave the church. No, I'm going to leave the church. In and out, in and out. You, you don't need to be preaching and you don't need to baptize. Be sound. If I'm going to change teaching, let me change from wrong teaching That's it. to right teaching. That's not showing me being unstable. That's showing me pushing for stability. Because in this life, you cannot afford to be unstable. Jesus is coming. Hey. <clears throat> That's why I'm glad God gave us a rough, tough gospel that will put you on the right path and the straight path and to give you stability if you're simple, simply digest it. Listen at this. A double-minded man is a double-minded man is unstable. <clears throat> How much? In all his ways. All his ways. When you're double-minded, your story keeps changing. You're the double-minded man, the woman on the witness stand. Their story gonna keep changing. Sound person, their story ain't changing. Same thing. Devil minded, always in and out, fluctuating. Ain't never got no stability. Brothers and sisters that are following the truth of God, you that are watching. And the religion that you're in. How sound is it? 
Because true soundness is scriptural sound. Sound. Right. When you're not sound with the word of God, your family can change it. I'm sound in this. That's why I won't. I won't even fellowship. I won't even fellowship with the preacher that don't believe all this. If I know there are things in here that Jesus taught and gave his apostles, you don't believe, you ain't preaching here. Out of hospitality, I'll let you have some remarks to say. But you won't preach it. You believe there's more than one God? Uh-uh, can't preach it. What about if I invite you to preach, Pastor Jennings? I bring the sword. Yes, I bring the sword and kill all your other two guards and one to be standing. When I came up in falsehood, as I often say, I came out of the fake fellowship services where everybody was unstable. This preacher believed one thing. That preacher believed another. That preacher believed in divorce. That preacher believed in living together, not married. That preacher believed in three gods. That preacher believed in women preachers. That preacher was a bigot. All type of folly. That preacher believed women can wear pants. That preacher believed men can wear dresses. They will compromise to get that money from that church. And many of you watching, you are in the exact same thing that God brought me out of. Hopping from church to church to church, fellowship service. The Bible says all that believe were together. That's right. That's written. God commanded that everybody believe the same thing. 1 Corinthians 1.10 and hold James 1.8. Get this, viewers. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and at verse 10. Follow me in your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and at verse 10. All right, turn me ready up some more. Come on, son. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That ye all speak the same thing. Do you hear that? Ye all. I don't care how black or how white or how rich or how poor you are. The Bible says you all do what? Speak the same thing. When he was here in the flesh, he had 12 apostles. After he died and rose and ascended far above all heavens, Matthias later on was added, taking the place of Judas. Then Barnabas and Paul. But even the ones that came after he ascended, not one brought anything different. How is it then today? Men don't see nothing wrong with being different from the Bible. As long as you're getting that money. I would never sell my soul to have a pulpit full of unbelieving preachers. That's right. Are you listening? Oh, yeah. Even if me and the preacher talk and we don't see eye to eye, for the Bible says they shall see eye to eye. You ain't preaching here until we see eye to eye. On what pathogen is everything? That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. When I came up in falsehood, it isn't one church that the church I was in fellowship with and the preachers believe the same thing. Not one. Every church in falsehood that the church I came out of with fellowship with every last one of them believe something different. When I was a kid, they had what was called a minister's conference meeting. All the churches would come, you know, little churches and whatnot here and there. Pulpit full of preachers. Full of them. 
everybody. Some of them had women preachers. Some of them wives were the assistant pastor. Some baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all in Jesus' name. Some of the preachers were alcoholics. Everything. Some of the bishops didn't even have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And was leading people. And the preachers was willing to settle for it. Come together, raise money, and then cut it up and divide the pie among themselves. And that's what people are still doing now. Apostolics, Pentecostals, non-denominationals, they're still doing it now. Everybody come together with something different. Listen at what the word of God says. Now I beseech you, brother. Now. He calling your attention now. Now. I beseech you, brethren. I'm glad I don't have to sell myself. You know, a prostitute sell herself to get service. I don't have to sell my soul the fellowship with a preacher. No. I watched these men as a child growing up. Sold their dignity. Sold their respect. They would go to churches by invitation to so-called preach. Knowing the people don't believe this and that and the other. And won't preach against it. So they don't offend nobody. So, they, so two things. They didn't want to offend nobody. And they want their speakers off. I come to your church. And kill everybody there. And offend your daddy. And offend your founder. And do it all with Bible. And if you raise me an offering, I tell you, keep it. Because your money going to perish with you. People were in the last days. You see the Holy Ghost moving in the truth of God around the world in a manner that you can't see nowhere else. God, hallelujah. God chose this. And made it a light. To creation. It's the Lord's doing. That's it. I'm a firm believer. A holy sanctified message. Will give you holy sanctified results. Somebody say well I wouldn't say that. I don't care what you wouldn't say. I can go to the Bible and see it. Moses brought a holy sanctified message down there to Egypt and God sanctified the people and separated Israel from the Egyptians, didn't he? Right. Yes. Sure. Jesus came with a holy sanctified message and separated the apostles from where they were and sent the apostles out with the same message and now people start separating themselves from the world and coming to God. Yeah. 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 What did they preach? Jesus and him crucified and who Christ was. They didn't only preach that Jesus was the son of God. They ain't only preach that. No. They also preached he was God. That's, it. That's the mystery. The mystery is not just Jesus was the son of God. Or Jesus is the son of God. That's not just the mystery. The mystery was and is that he was God and the son of God. Is that Bible? Yes. Give me 1 Timothy if I'm correct. 3.16. The Bible going to speak so plain what the mystery is. Follow me and get this. 1 uh, Timothy, Timothy chapter 3. Don't go first... Williams on me now. <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 3. You hear your brother Williams? Ah. <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen and, at the Bible. And without controversy. No use talking. Without. That's right. That's right. Without controversy. What did the Bible say? Great. Great. 
is the mystery of godliness. Great. Great is the mystery of, of godliness. godliness. What is the first mystery pointing to? God what? was man God was manifest. Hold it. Come on, Jay. The first mystery is God. God. That's it. The first mystery point to the spirit. God. Subject. God. He's a mystery. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, Jay. Everybody don't know him. That's right. They think he have a, an assistant. No. No. Think he got a partner or associate, not God. No. Great. Hallelujah. Is the great is the mystery of godliness. Of godliness. Yeah. God. The first subject is God. That's God. a mystery to him. That's it. You gotta talk about the spirit before you talk about son. That's it. That's it. Man. God was, was manifest manifested in the flesh. That son of God. That's right. Spirit manifest in flesh. God manifest in son of God. That's the mystery. That's right. Can't put the son of God in front of God. No. Can't put the flesh. Hallelujah. In front of the spirit. The spirit is before all things. God. That's the mystery. And the apostles preached that mystery. Yes, they did. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Whenever you have men, this is what you have all these organizations UPC, PAW. I'm glad to have. Elder Gray back and Deacon uh, Deacon Fazer and uh, they were here a few weeks ago as you know from PAW yeah. and uh, Bishop put them out the church, the Bishop saw the, our webcast yeah. the Bishop done them a favor oh. yeah. wonderful Now I want to say to the PAW Bishop of Washington and all of my Washington, D.C. viewers, I've said before, i say again, I'm coming in Washington, D.C. Yes. God willing, we're going to buy a building and set it up and bomb the Capitol with Bible. Yes. All of you PAW yes. followers, I was under Bishop Ellis. Uh -huh. You that left Bishop Ellis. You that's in UPC. Both of y'all are twin sisters. <laughs> you believe the same lies. Don't have to cover your head. And women can preach. And divorce and remarry. Bishops and elders and pastors with two and three wives. No! The Bible says, come out of her, my people. Come out. I want to say to all of you here in Washington and every place else, leave the United Pentecostal Church and leave the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world. Leave the Assemblies of God. Leave the Church of God in Christ. Leave all of them. If you're a pastor, minister, bishop, elder, evangelist, leave them. Or be stubborn and stay there and die and go to hell. God ain't never called women to preach. That goes for you too, bishop. I'm talking about you and your wife. All of you that got women preachers, if she don't sit down, she's going to go to hell in her pumps. That's true. That's true. Hmm? That's right. Hell gonna take the pumps off her feet. Right. Go back to the book of James. Come on. No, back. go back to 1 Corinthians 1 10. Back and then we'll balance out with James. Everybody all right? Oh, yeah. 
First, Follow me and get me. First Corinthians chapter one and at verse ten. All right. Now I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, brothers, preachers, preachers. Yeah. By the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That ye all speak the same thing. Here yeah, I'm looking at a horse. Don't go tell me that's a rhinoceros. That's right. That's right. Hmm? I'm looking at a horse. And you come along standing right next to me. Pastor Jennings, that's, that's a rhinoceros. Let us speak the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. You see a mouse there. Don't go tell me that's a giraffe that shrunk. Right. The Bible is here plain. That's right. That ye all speak the How same. How much? All. You should not. In these neighborhoods, 30, 40, 50, 60 churches, it's true. you're supposed to be able to go into every church and find the same message coming out of every church that comes from the word of God. Church today have gotten so loose. Uh, some even put the disco lights up in the pool. You know the disco ball? Got the disco ball right over the pulpit. It's true. And then got psychedelic lights on the stage blinking. No! It's true. For church singers. What in the world people think church is? And you wonder why the sinners and comedians make fun of you. Sinners don't respect you because you're right out there with them. Yeah. Amen. Last night we were sitting home and uh, a lot of folk hear me talk about these false prophets like Daddy Grace and Father yeah. Divine and right. false prophet Jones. But many people never <laughs> saw them. So I pulled them up on YouTube. My wife came and sat next to him. She said, who's that? I said, oh, this is uh, Daddy Grace organization. Uh -huh. The false prophet that's there now is they call him Sweet Daddy Bailey. He likes yeah. to wear about 300 pounds. Yeah. And all of them. All the bishops that die take on the title Sweet Daddy. And when they pray, they pray to Daddy Grace. Mm. And you can look at them and see it's a spirit. All of them just jump, do the same thing. Mm. She said, Gino, that's scary. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Scary. Then they had an old 1962 or 63 interview clip of a false prophet, Prophet Jones, who was known for his long white mink coat and weak hat, mink hat. Chains and braces all over and big diamonds and sapphires on every finger. Nails all manicured and pointy like a sissy. With an old outdated toupee on. Man interviewed him and say all of these things, he said, how did you get them? He said, well, because when I serve the people, they're so grateful. They go out and buy me these things as gifts. Gifts. I wish somebody would buy me a diamond ring. I give it back to you. People, people ask me, Pastor Dennis, I noticed you don't wear rings. Uh, uh, what's your wife say? I said, she don't say nothing because she don't wear nothing either. <laughs> Amen. I, don't need, I didn't need to buy her a ring. Amen. And then my mortgage money go to it. <laughs> I'm her ring. Amen. And she's my ring. Amen. So you find the preachers today. They are ripoffs. I want to take my time and soak you real good, viewers. Look at the church you're in. Look at the religious ripoff. In the West, back in the years ago, in the 1800s, they called them carpetbaggers. They come in an old Western town to rip you off. And if you look at these fellas, they all got the same thing. Years ago, the so-called apostolics didn't do this type of stuff. But even the apostolics have fell into it. Many of you young people wasn't living when the so-called Reverend Ike was around. But we that 
you know, been around. We, we, we remember old Ike and Coder. <laughs> he looked like Little Richard. Yeah, he used to look like Little Richard. You wouldn't believe where I came from. I came from the leadership of Bishop R.C. Lawson. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The same organization that Bishop S.C. Johnson came out of. Bishop T.D. Jakes came out of the apostolic church. A lot of these men today who no longer believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Now they believe in Trinity. Now the women all on the choir with pants on looking like a disco junk. And churches have become so weak, so watered down until it is acceptable in the sight of everybody. And why is so many folk criticizing us? It's because we hold on to that old-fashioned way of holiness. There ain't nobody coming in here and try to modernize it either. You come in, we'll run you out. Beautiful. Amen. From pulpit down. Well, I'm going to try to slip some stuff. You know, you stick a note and slide it under the door. Ain't no one going to slide no false teaching in here. Every man that tried it, he's not here now. That's right. Beautiful. Amen. When I, years ago, when I was training a fella in Alabama, he tried to slip divorce in the church. He ain't here now. Fella down in Mississippi tried to slip no apostles in, no tithing. He got, he slipped right out. Not here now. Only thing that's allowed is clean preaching. And if you can't do that, sit down. All these thousands of people came out of all type of backgrounds. They didn't come out of junk to be taught junk. We come out of junk so God can clean us up from the junk. That's it. Are you listening? Amen. What the Holy Ghost said. Now I beseech you, brethren. Now I beseech you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That ye all speak the same thing. When you got the same thing, what is the result? And that there be no divisions among you. No divisions. No divisions. Among you. You have this fella break off, start a church. That fella break off, start a church. That fella break off, start a church. And before you know it, you have three different ideologies. And it keep happening, keep happening, keep happening. It, it will happen until Jesus comes. That's it. And it plunged the people into a state of confusion. People have been watching this program for years and can bear witness. We have not deviated and we have not changed. We preach the same thing today and yesterday. Long as, hallelujah, long as God be God. You know, if it ain't broken, it don't need to be fixed. Beautiful. You men have compromised too much, too long. I came from under a preacher. In the beginning stages, he wouldn't compromise. Later on, start compromising. I would knock on his office door. Yeah. Why is it we doing this? Why is it we doing right. that? The Bible says this. The Bible says that until he got sick of me. He said, that's your problem. You want Bible for something so much. He told me you will never find a church that believe all the Bible. Can you imagine a preacher telling me this? A bishop who claimed he believed the Bible. Apostolics now. Some of them I came up with. See, nothing wrong with same-sex marriages. Some of the bishops are now performing them. Oh, how far gone. 
Don't you people realize at all that you must stand before God. You're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So what are you getting away with? Nothing. I'm going to perform a wedding of two men. I don't care if both of them was billionaires. And each one offered me $500 million a piece. That alone would be an insult to me. That's true. Because now you would think that my dignity could be bought for a measly $500 million. So I say, well, that's not a measly compared to my dignity. That's like a penny to me. You got to put your Holy Ghost dignity above money. If you're not a whore, you should not be so easily bought. Wonderful. Glory to God. Amen. What did the word of God says here? Now I beseech you, brethren. By now. I beseech, I beseech you, brethren, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That ye all speak the same thing. When you speak the same thing, what's the result? And that there be no divisions among you. I ain't going to have no menace in the truth of God preaching something else that's different from the word of God. That's right. A lot of bishops go along with it and tolerate it. And long as the income of that branch church is big. Your soul is more important than your tithing and offering. You got to speak the same thing or get out the pulpit. Speak the same thing. You have thing. to do it. Not try to do it. No, 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 no. You have to do it. Right. Speak the same this thing. This is the commandment. That's right. Must. Must do it. Speak the same thing so there be no divisions. Among you. That way no temple got a different belief from another That's temple. Right. When another temple got a different belief and the other temple don't have that belief, then they, what, it creates friction among the members. Yeah. And then they be at odds with one another. It's true. Because the minister is making enemies. He's trying to start a church in a church. Yeah. Hey. Oh, you listen to the old man. Amen. That's why men got to be so sound until if the minister deviates, you ain't so close to him where you are unstable and you are taken over by the deviation. That's right. His friendship is not more valued than your close relationship with God. Your close relationship with God is more important than your friendship with a local minister. Yeah. Or any preacher for that matter. Right. You let me change up and start bringing women preachers. If you sit under me, you a fool. Right. Amen. Amen. You better get away from Pastor Jennings far away. Because rest assured you, I'm on my way to hell. That's right. That's true. Pastor Jennings, I love you. Love me from afar. Any time I'm willing to step away from God to appease the people. Don't you know when God make a preacher, he deliver him from the people. And then send him back to the people to witness to the people. <laughs> Listen at this. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That you all speak the same thing. And when that happened, what's the result? And that there be no divisions among you. But what? But... That ye be perfectly, perfectly joined perfectly, together. Perfectly, complete. Completely. Joined together. Joined. All locked and tight. In the same mind. You think the same way when it comes to the word of God. And in the same judgment. And you will use righteous judgment. Your judgment will come from scripture. Go back to James. Back in the book of James chapter 1 and at verse 8. Listen at this. A double-minded man is unstable. In all his ways. This is what has happened. 
preachers have started socializing with other preachers. And then they start finding their Bible belief going under. I'm glad I don't have to invite 10 preachers to make a church look full. And then when we all leave, everybody go back to their own empty place. And the only thing benefited from that meeting was an offering pan. That's true. True church is when you got the same thing according to the word of God. You done repented of your sins, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, believe in God the same way, follow God's word by the same principle. Yes! That's right! You just can't quote something to me or read something and go running. Oh no, that thing got to be broken down and taken apart. That's what Daniel did, the prophet. And that's what the apostles did. They open up what the prophets preach. That's right. right. Oh, yes. Don't you be double minded this afternoon. Amen. When you're double minded, you got too much flexibility. I don't care how much you shout. You all you shout and unstable. Some of you speak in tongue, unstable. Jerking, doing the boogaloo. <laughs> unstable. You in the, anytime I'm in the spirit more than I'm obedient, something is wrong. That's right. That's true. All that spirit you got <laughs> shook the devil right out of you. Unstable. Got all type of beliefs. And then they hook up with men who got this belief, this one got that belief, this one got that belief, and now you're worse than you were. Mm. That's why if you look at false churches, they let anything in the pool of it. They don't even know you. Give you credentials. Stability or instability will manifest itself. Sometimes I take a license to bring it out. It's true. So a license you use as bait because they make that man more comfortable then. Show himself. Then when they come out, take your license from him. See what he really believed. Then you'll see he believed that there's another God with God. Or believe that Jesus is the second entity. Or the second person in the Godhead. Or believe it don't matter how you're baptized in Jesus' name or Jesus Christ. Somehow, some way, one thing about belief or unbelief. You can't keep that thing stored away. Eventually, it's going to come out to somebody, even if it's behind your back. That's true. Are you getting me? Amen. James says what? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And what else? Let the brother of low degree rejoice. Let the brother of low degree. Don't be tight, oh craves. Don't be anxious to get in the pool of it. Amen. Let the brother of low degree be happy. Rejoice. Rejoice. In that he is exalted. That's what I want. I always want to keep a low degree in God. Beautiful. Because he whom the Lord exalts, God will exalt you in due time. People can exalt you before time. And the same ones that do that, they're going to take that exaltation right from you. That's right. When you're stable, you don't have a desire to fellowship with falsehood. I don't have that desire. I don't have that desire. I don't have that desire to fellowship. I had the minister come up early in the week, visit me for his birthday, and uh, took him out to eat. We talked, talk about the Bible. He had questions about the Godhead. And my stand on the Godhead. Amen. Then he anxiously wanted to see the headquarters. And I brought him here to the headquarters, show him around. He said, seeing it in person is not like seeing it on television. He said, man, it's something. Amen. He said, let me take a picture of you behind the pulpit. I said, no, that's all right. I said, I'll tell you what, you stand behind the pulpit. <laughs> he said, me? I said, yeah, you stand behind the pulpit. I take, I take a picture of you. 
took two pictures of him behind the polar bear, took him in the main auditorium, and he went out there and looked at the fleet of buses, and went out there and looked at uh, the way of holding this tractor trailer, the way of holding the truck. He said, my Lord. He said, I didn't know it was all this. I said, yes, this is just a little fragment. I mean, this is just a fragment. You gotta say like the queen, the half has not been told. Just a fragment. Amen. God Almighty is in the truth of God. We bear witness of that. And uh, our stand is a Bible stand. 